All right, so here's the Telario Sting R. So I have the uh, 21 front wheel and 18 back. So because of the 21 front wheel, it's bigger in diameter, right? So as you're rolling, now the wheel, because it's bigger in diameter and the brakes just stay the same size, the wheel has more leverage against the brakes. So basically it makes, it makes the brakes a little weaker. So I actually got the uh, uh, oversized rotor, gaffer, All right? That's the part number. Uh, what's the size on here? It doesn't say. But anyways, it's a. Uh, this is a. Uh, actually, it says it on the road itself. Let's open this up. This is a. Let's see. Spin direction minimum one point eight millimeters. Uh, right here. 246 millimeters so 246 so remember that you know the Talari and the Suron they're basically you know they're mountain bike parts you know like this forks mountain bike the brakes are mountain bikes even the rotors mountain bike so this is also a mountain bike rotor as well here's the oversized one so this fork you know it has the post mount the post mount that it comes with is intended for a 203 millimeter. I believe it's 203 or 200, still 200 or 203. And that's kind of the standard. If, if you're using SRAM, you know, it's a SRAM is 200. If you're using Shimano and most everyone else, I think everyone, pretty much everyone else besides SRAM uses 203. But anyways, uh, Talaria uses a 220 oversize. So there's a 220 and I believe there might be also a 223 millimeters, maybe. Something like that. But anyways, uh, so so this size is even bigger. This is sort of a specialty niche size. No, normally they don't usually use this size. This is like, you know, straight up, D, well this is a really straight up DH rotor right here already, 220. But this is even more extreme DH, like really steep stuff, long, long runs. Um. Uh, so, so I mentioned the, the original post size to this this two twenty size. So, if, so to to make up for that size difference on the mount, you have an adapter, and this adapter right here is to make it you know bigger by by that much uh, that much more right from the the original uh, two hundred or two or three size to uh, to a two twenty. So you need the same thing with for putting this on. So I have a, a mount here. So these mounts, these mounts, they have the size specific for going from whatever given size to the next size up. So this this Shimano adapter right here, this is for a uh, let me see. So this is meant for a two or three post mount, which I believe that's what this is. Two or three, either two hundred or two or three, it's close enough. And then you know I've I've tried a two. 200 on a 203 and I try 203 on a 200 and, and it's close enough. It works. It works just fine. So anyway, so this is meant for a 203 post mount. 203 post mount. Uh, and and the increase in size from the original 203 on this adapter goes up to... Uh, to uh, it's a plus 43. So basically 203 plus 43 is 246. Right? So... And that's what this rotor size is, 246. So it should fit you know pretty much perfectly. So I need a what I need to do now is I need to take off the wheel and take off the uh the brakes and the uh the adapter and put on this adapter and put the rotor on the on the old wheel. Um you know swap out the rotor and swap out the adapter. Um and that should you know that should do it. So yeah, so let's do that. All right, so you need a uh, twelve millimeter Allen for the for the other side, um, right? And this side is a nineteen millimeter socket. Um, so actually, before I do that, I need to loosen up the the pinch bolts up on the front right here. So those ones should be five millimeters. Where's my five millimeter at? I think the five. Yeah, the five. 
five millimeters. So right now I have the bike uh, up on a stand, a bike stand. So hopefully it'll hold. The front is actually heavier than the rear because of this front tire is bigger. If I have the stock wheel size on here, it might it might be just you know as far as the balance goes, it might be just right, just perfect. Uh, you know, resting it on the, uh, the skid plate, but uh, obviously I, I don't I have the aftermarket wheels, so so they they're a little bit bigger and heavier, right? Make sure the pinch bolts are loose. All right. All loose. Okay. I'll get my 19 millimeter. It's best to use a six point socket versus a uh, versus a um, versus a uh, 12 point because you know these this nut here, for example, is aluminum and a 12 point. Most more likely to strip this than a than a six point wheel, so so that's a safe bet. I can't remember which size is nut, which size is bolt. So I spun the other side. Felt like the other side spun a little easier. So this actually didn't. The threads on this side, so it's better to spin on this side. Actually, I still have uh, anti seize on here from from the last time. I better put that stuff away. Oops, shit. Away from my rotor. Keep my rotor clean. I already touched the rotor a little bit with my uh, fingers, but I'm gonna clean it off in a moment with the uh, alcohol. So that's so okay. My fingers are not all greasy, so it's fine. Still not coming up. I'm gonna put the weights on here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, axles out. Right. Axles out. So the front wheel will just go right out. Watch out for the calipers. And the bike should basically self uh, self balance right now. All right, so now we just need to take the rotor apart here. So that's gonna be with a uh, with some torques. Let's see. Uh. So I think that's a Torx. It's either 25 or 30. Let's see. Yep, looks like a 25. Let's try a 30 just in case. Nope, not a 30. Excuse me, that wasn't a 30, that was a 27. So. Yeah. Just enough to break it loose. And here I'm pushing down on here, so make sure that the 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 tool bit doesn't uh, slide out, doesn't pop out. Okay. I, mean, I think these are locked tight. That's why they feel kind of. Feel a little sticky to me. Anytime when the thread feels kind of sticky, that usually means they're locked tight. Even though they're loose, you, you loosen them already, but it's still, still you still feel resistance, and it's, they have locked tight on, on them, which is a good idea for brake rotor bolts. The brake, brake rotor bolts goes through a lot of stress and vibration when you're braking. Shear, shear forces and vibrations from uh, from from just the nature of brakes. 
you know, they vibrate. That's why sometimes some brakes make a lot of noise. You know, that's the vibrations. When I initially loosen them up, I loosen them up in a cross cross pattern. So once once I loosen up, you don't have to worry about the cross pattern anymore. You can just go go all the way around. But uh, when you when you fish initially loosen stuff up, good idea to go in the cross pattern. Just like when you tighten it up, it's a good idea to go in the cross pattern, right? So this is a six bolt uh, in, a, in mountain biking. This is referred to as a six bolt IS. IS stands for International Standard. So back in the day, back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, I think it was probably the late 90s. Yeah, yeah, I think it was the late 90s, if I remember correctly. Uh, the mountain bike industry went through uh, some changes and uh, disc brakes were new at the time and, 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 you know, and they were still figuring out Standards and even to this day, there's still lots of different standards. There's a bunch of different standards for whatever. Even with disc brakes, there's international standard, um, and various standards. Uh, so there's the rotor. Actually, let me grab my calipers and oh, let's look at the thickness. So this thickness here is supposed to be. Uh, 2.3 millimeters. So zero it out, right? Zero it out. Okay. It's kind of hard to see because of the glare of the light. So zero it out. 2.38, 2.33, 2 2.32. So yeah, so it's 2.3, right? Set that aside. Let's get the new rotor. Get the new rotor here. Two point three five, three five, three four, three five, three five. Yeah. So basically, it's the same same diameter for the most part. Actually, oh, not the same diameter. The same um, the same um, not diameter. Diameter is the wrong word. The same um, thickness. So I still have some of the old Loctite in here, and I'm going to blow it out a little bit. It's not a good idea to uh, leave the old Loctite in, because it's, you know, for example, on these, this bolt right here. See how that old Loctite? Because the old Loctite will prevent the new new Loctite from uh, from working. Once, once the Loctite's been broken out, it's considered basically a contaminant. It's considered dirt, basically. So it's a good idea to uh, to clean it off, clean off the Loctite. So I get a wire wire brush and I just basically brush off the old Loctite, like so. All right. So the problem with this is that you still have Loctite in, on the female side. So that's the part that's hard to clean up. So what I usually do with that is I uh, I will actually once I clean these up, I will actually start will uh, screw these back in into the female just to screw them back in to break up the old Loctite. Um, you know to break up the old Loctite. Uh, do that like a few times. Oops. Did that a few times and uh, and that usually works really well, good enough in in my experience. Right, that's how Loctite works. Loctite needs three conditions: it needs the metal to be clean, everything to be clean, right? You can't have dirtiness. That's one condition. 
second condition is that it needs to uh, work on uh, metal that's reactive. So if the metal is not reactive at all, it's it Loctite doesn't work very well because it because there's an actual there's an actual chemical reaction that happens. So the more reactive that metal is, uh, the uh, the better the Loctite will will actually work because it, you know again it's a chemical reaction. Uh, so for example, a great example would be uh, steel, you know, just just carbon steel versus stainless steel. Stainless steel is less reactive, so Loctite does work on stainless steel, but it doesn't work as good as, as carbon steel. Uh, you know, because stainless steel does react, but it just reacts less, right? That's, that's why it's called stainless. It's less. It's not, you know, it's not like, the, it's not stain proof. All right, so that's what I do. I just basically screw screw the threads in like so. So that helps break up whatever Loctite that's on the female side. All right. So uh, yeah, so so you need some reaction for the Loctite, right? Um. And the third third condition that you need for Loctite to work is you need it to be a, a airless, or I should I should say airless, I should say um, um, oxygenless environment. So because Loctite works by uh, anaerobic condition, so there's no no oxygen. So uh, so you leave it where there's oxygen, there's aerobic. Then, then it doesn't work quite well. Again, it has to do with a chemical reaction. So, so Loctite needs needs to, you know, it cures, right? It doesn't it doesn't dry, it cures. So for it to cure, it, the the chemical reaction has to be proper for it to work really well. It's like cement, you know, the cement right here, this, this slab of cement that, that, that I'm on right now. Yeah. When you have, um, or I should say, slab concrete, that's not, not cement. Slab of concrete, for it to work. For the cement, when you have cement for it to work and 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 uh, dry and everything, it doesn't actually dry, right? It, it, it actually cures. The cement cures. You know, you have you have the cement. You add water and it cures. Uh, it doesn't just dry because if it just dries, then the cement will just turn back into you know gravel and sand and, and whatever mixture it has. But it doesn't. It doesn't just. It doesn't turn back when it dries. It becomes a solid block. That's because there's an actual chemical reaction that happens uh, in there, and it uh, so it cures. So so it's different. It's so so when when you hear the word cure, that means there's a chemical reaction going on. All right, so I'm just gonna blow in here. If you have an air compressor, blow out the hose. Actually, I have an air compressor. Let me let me take it out the air compressor and blow out the hose real quick. Okay, blew it out with the air compressor, should be good. Uh, and put the rotor on. I should clean the rotor first, but now nah, I'm gonna clean the rotor afterwards. So everything's clean here, the surface here is clean. All right, the mating surface is good. So the rotor has a, has a direction that, that it shows. See, that's 246 millimeter diameter, patented Galfer. Galfer is a Spanish company, I believe. Oh, here it is, here's the arrow. So the arrow is going in that direction, this direction, so that, uh, yeah, that's, so it's in the right direction. So yeah, so Gaffo is a Spanish company, uh, you know, specialized in, in making uh, uh, brakes, uh, brake radiator stuff. So in this case, uh, rotors, so they make uh, rotors, I'm not sure if Gaffo actually makes the actual brakes or not. 
like you know like actual calipers and and master cylinders i think all they all they make is is a um i think all they make is a um loaders and, and brake pads as far as i'm aware um but you know but i could be wrong i've i never seen galfer calipers and cal galfer uh master cylinders so that's why i think all they do is just make uh like rotors and brake pads so you guys can probably hear the crickets so it's like yeah, like at least an hour past sunset already. So I used earlier, but it was it was kind of warm earlier. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to go outside. I'm gonna get all hot and sweaty. Actually, I was thinking about doing it tomorrow, but I want to go on a ride tomorrow. So I'm gonna do it today. So yeah, so this should make it a little bit, uh, have a little bit more power, a little bit more, uh, um, more resistance against overheating, because there's more mass there. There's more mass. Um, larger rotor doesn't get work as hard as smaller rotors. Um, so here, you know, those are small little bolts. So when you're using a wrench, don't hold it over here. That's way too much. I hold it right here at the head, just like if I was holding like an Allen wrench, Allen key. Oops. So tightening in the cross patterns. So the first one, I'm just just lightly, right? so just lightly only. Again, going in the cross pattern. In this case, I'm going in a clockwise direction. Cross pattern. Second time around, I'll go a little bit tighter. I have no idea what the newton meters or the torque setting is. You just go by my feel. That's, that's good. I'm good. That's tight enough. So we're good there. Now I have to clean the, the rotors before I stick it. Actually, you know, I can't stick it back on yet. I need to do the. Uh, the uh, calipers. You switch, switch those out, right? So let's see. What size is this? I think this is five millimeter. Yep. Five millimeter. These are probably Loctite as well. Oh, this one goes all the way through. Oh, this is a straight through. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, the bolt goes all the way through. One bolt goes all the way through. It's usually, usually when you have it, have an adapter, it's usually two bolts, but it doesn't go all the way through. It's, it's like kind of offset a little bit. So let's see how this works. Okay, there's the original adapter. Here's the new one. I have a Shimano. I'm using a Shimano. I'm not sure if this thing comes with bolts. I don't think it does. So obviously I, I'm not gonna be able to use the original bolts because this one's offset. You see the two, two bolts for the for the 
for the uh, fork, and these two right here are for the um, caliper. So on here it says up, so I'm going to use that up, so like so, that, and some over here. Alright, so I'm going to have to find some, I'm not sure if I have any bolts, damn it, I didn't know, I didn't know this was a single bolt, I thought it was two bolts. Okay, I'm going to have to look for some bolts. Okay, so luckily for me, I found some bolts. You got to get proper bolts, you can't just use any bolts, the bolts have to be long enough. The thing would break, uh, with brakes, for mountain bikes anyways. The bolts, the insertion, there's depth of insertion. It needs to be anywhere from um, 10 to 12 millimeter. So if it's less than that, it's not strong enough, all right? But also you have to have the proper type of bolt too, you know, because bolts are different grades. So these are this brake, you know, this brake uh, bolts for, for bicycles. So, so we're good there. All right, so where are we at? Okay, so the adapter, I have a thing that says up, so I'm gonna use that. Use up. Um, man, it's starting to get bugs in here. It's funny how different times of the day, there's different bugs. Like like an hour ago when the sun was still up, there were like a bunch of flies. But now the sun is down, bugs are different. So, so I don't see... See the old one has yeah the old one I see Loctite but it's a different type of Loctite it's, it's a it's the factory Loctite where just like here let me show you guys this one see how that's a little bit of Loctite right there that's a factory Loctite that one's a little bit different it doesn't quite it doesn't quite work the same like the the Loctite you buy um, it's just, it's slightly different because it's you know it's already dried up um, it's already dried up basically. Um, So again, oops. again, this wrench is that long. I'm not holding it here. That's way too much torque and it's gonna strip. I'm holding it right here at the head. As you know, because this is a five millimeter. So I'm holding it here just like as if it was a um an Allen key. I'm not sure what the torque setting is. The torque is probably you know, for this size, I'm guessing it's probably maybe eight foot pounds or something like that. Probably like six newton meters, eight newton meters at the most, probably six, eight, ten foot pounds around there. I would say no more than ten. Ten is I might be kind of, I might be too much for the size of this. Is um, oh man, this thing doesn't work. Doesn't fit. This way is in the way. Dang it! See that? It's hitting right here. So I actually I can't fit right here. Unless I put some some washers, but if the washers are in there, um, it's hitting the caliper right here. If I put the washers in there, it's gonna it might be not be the right size. Dang it! Got some thick washers too. If I do put some washers in there, I might have some washers to put in there. Um, I'm gonna try it. Let me see. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to get a different, uh, a different, uh, a different uh, adapter. Because this adapter, this is a Shimano adapter. It's meant for Shimano brakes, and these are not Shimano brakes, right? These are t t uh, Telaria brakes. Shoot, I wasn't expecting that. Actually, I guess, I guess that's sort of a good thing that that happened. That way, you guys could see that you know, things don't always work out. Like you think it would, so let's try sticking the wheel back in. Uh, I'm not even gonna clean the wheel yet because 
Most likely I'm gonna be touching shit. So let's just take this right here for now. Enough. Again, this is an aluminum nut, so you don't want to make it too tight. Um, make a strip. Alright, let's get the pinch bolts in. So pinch bolts, pinch bolts, there's, there's two, you, what, what you want to do is you want to slowly alternate tightening it. You don't want to just tighten one side real tight and then the other side. You want to slowly tighten this side, okay, that's tight, right there, look at that side. So you want to alternate it. And when you take them off, you want to do the same thing, you want to slowly take, take uh, alternate them, uh, loosen one side a little bit, you know. I would say no more than a quarter turn when you loosen it uh, each side. That way, everything that the torque on them is nice and uniform. Again, this is a five millimeter, and I'm holding it right here at the head, like so, so that way I don't over torque it. So I think I'm almost there. That's it. Yeah, pretty much there. just about there. Yep, I think so. Yep. So other side. Okay, go for good. Go back to this. Let's actually just let's just place this in here. See, see if I'm uh, pretty close as far as the, the sizing goes. Okay. Yep. So again, it's hitting the caliper on this uh, bridge here. So this one's a straight. A lot of these adapters, they make them curved. That's to clear the caliper. I should have thought about that when I bought this, but just like the here's the original one, how it's curved to clear the caliper. That's what I need. I need I need one that's curved. Uh, so let's look on this side. I want to see how much how much the uh, the rotor is off. It's hard for you guys to see. I'm not sure if you guys could see it or not. Yeah, so I can't use the washer. If I use the washer, the rotor will be too far away. It'll be too far away. It won't be, uh... Yeah, it won't be. Yeah, the rotor will be too far off. Nope. Can't do that. It's right there, too. It's literally right, right there. You can see it. Let's 
literally right there. You see the edge of the rotor right there, right up against against the uh, just a few millimeters shy of the of the. Uh, actually, you know what? This will actually fit because that's that's the low section of the rotor. So if I put a wash in here, it might fit. Let me spin the wheel real quickly. Just get the high section up of the rotor. Yeah, right. There, it's right there. The high section of the rotor is actually right there. So that this actually does fit. That's interesting. So this actually does fit. But still, I don't like being that close. Um, yeah, I don't like being that close. I still would rather have the have the um, have the proper bracket. Okay, so I'm gonna have to order a different bracket then. Okay, well, I guess I can't finish this video t tonight. So next, the next tip you'll see is gonna be a different day, probably a week from now. You know, it's gonna take a few days to get a new one in, right? So I have to get a, a different one then. All right, that's it for now. So for you guys, it'll be only a second or so. For me, it's gonna be a week. All right, I dug, I dug into my uh, mountain bike parts and I found this bracket. This is also a 233, oh, excuse me, 203 mount. So that means it fits here. But this one is a, uh, as far as the size, it's not a, uh, cause this, this size right here, this is a 43 uh, up size. This one's a 39. So, uh, so that means, that means, uh, 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 you know, it's going to be a little bit smaller, but so we'll see, we'll see if it, if it works or not. Let's see, up, up like that. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I am not sure. Let's see if this will work. God, I hope it will. I was using was too thick. It was actually hitting the uh, was hitting the rotor. Okay, that's a little better. And where do I have a wrench? Where's my wrench? Where's my wrench? Oh, I have to use an adapter. Use this adapter here. Oops. work. Hopefully it's not too uh, too small. That could very well be to be too small. I want to just feel so tight. Once that Loctite that's in there. That's that bit of Loctite and it's already all dried up and everything. So it's when they're like that they're, they're, they're actually very tight. works. Let's move the camera to this angle here. Let's see if that works or not. I hope it does, but who knows. Alright, let's see. Uh, let's put this in. Oh, I don't have enough slack in my brake line. Pull the brake down a little bit. Get a little bit more slack. Okay, nope, nope, doesn't fit. 
does not fit. Oh, it's right. Okay. So this was actually meant for a uh, 180 post. 180 to 203 is what it is. So I think that's what I meant. So it's labeled differently. Nope. Look at how far that is off. How far off that is. That's way off. Actually, you know what? I wonder. I can put this right here like this. Oh, look at that. Oh, that works. Well, that does work. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Now it's a matter of having the right bolt, right bolt length. So you can't, I can't use these anymore because I need 10 to 12 millimeters of, uh, of, of engagement in threads. So this one's not even reaching. So that's not going to work. Let's look at the original bolts. Here's the original bolts. Let's see a little bit this way. Oops. No, it's not that way. It's this way. It's this way. Yep, that way. So the original bolts. Oh, there. That works. See, the original bolts have, has enough engagement. Original bolt has enough engagement. Sweet. Okay. That's going to work. All right. So... So I guess I didn't have to order anything then. Let's see if these bolts are the same length. Sometimes they're not. Okay, they're the same length. So now I need to clean this up. Oh, oof, I'm glad I didn't have to order an another freaking bracket. So that's good for me. That's good for me. Let's clean it. Let's get some alcohol. I'll clean this up. Clean up this rotor. I have some 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol, 99%. So this is not, you know, this is not a first aid alcohol. First aid alcohol, you need a 70% uh, isopropyl, and the other 30% is water. And you're like, wait a minute, wouldn't more alcohol be better for? You know, more alcohol means more killing power. Yes, it's more killing power, but. But the problem with that is that you have to understand how how uh, how alcohol works in killing, you know, microbes. Is that the way alcohol works in killing microbes is actually uh, now alcohol does the killing, but but the the thing with cells, you know, when you look at cells, the cells have a uh, have you know they has that membrane, right, the cell wall membrane. So just like us humans, we have skin to protect us from from uh, microbes getting to us internally, you know, until you know, until we get a cut, right? So microbes are like that too. So their cell wall is their skin that protects the you know the the cell themselves from getting getting stuff that could harm them. So what happens is, uh, because of that cell wall, the alcohol itself cannot pass to, cannot uh, penetrate the cell wall. So what you need is you need you need something to break up the cell wall. So that's why the water comes in. The water will actually the water will actually break up the cell wall. Water will actually break up the cell wall. And um, man, this road is dirty, man. Look at that, look at that dirt. Man, look at that, look at all that dirt. Holy cow. I wasn't expecting a brand new road to be this dirty. I wonder if that's from the machining. From the machining or not. Let me do two, clean it up one more time. So yeah, so the microbe, uh, the cell wall needs to be broken up and the, that's what the water does. The water is, is the thing that, that penetrates the cell wall and kind of breaks up the, uh, breaks that cell wall. So now the alcohol could actually get in into the cell itself to kill that, that uh, microbe. So that's how that works. So that's why, Isopropyl 
alcohol if you want to use it as a first aid you have to get the minimum of 70 percent isopropyl and the other 30 percent is water that's you know, so so the water is critical without the water the alcohol itself doesn't work it's not effective Okay, second time two, not too dirty, right? Right here, see the wet spot? It's not all dirty like it was a moment ago. That made a big difference. So there it is. You see a little bit of dirt, but mostly that darkness is, is the uh, is the wetness. Okay, so we're done cleaning the, the rotor. Now I could I could put in the uh, the new or attach the uh, attach the uh, caliper. All right, so here's the this one. So let's go like this to clear clear the. Uh, The caliper, right? Has to be like that. I don't think it's like this. Is it? Was it like this? Oh, excuse me. It's like this. See how much clearance there is between the caliper and the and the bracket versus the in the improper way. See how it's like wanting to touch up right here where my thumb is. So it's this way. This way around. Let's get one of these bolts. It still has the that lock tight in there, and it's still. Doesn't look like it's much used up, but it's probably is, but I'm just gonna say fuck it. I could deal with it another time. Key here is actually to not really tighten it. You're actually just gonna, I'm gonna hand tighten it first, right? As tight as I can with my hand. And from there, I'm gonna turn it back, loosen it about a quarter of a turn, maybe even half a turn. Let's go half a turn. So, let's go half a turn. And the reason why I need to do that is because whenever you put on brake pads or calipers, you're not sure if the rotor is centered with the with the pads, so if it's not, when it when when you when the wheel is spinning, you can hear the pads rubbing on the rotor. So to uh, to center it, what you do is you you know leave it kind of loose, right? Half a turn loose, you see see it still, I guess still go side to side, right? You actually see the rotor. I'm not sure you guys could tell, but you can see the rotor moving side to side as well, right? As I'm moving this, so this is how you center the uh, the, the the caliper to the rotor. You leave it that half turn loose. You clamp on the brakes. You know, go back, go to the brake lever. Clamp on the brake. The 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 pads will close up. Once it closes up, then you could tighten the bolts down. Then when you release the lever, it should be pretty much centered and it shouldn't rub. Usually that works, but not always the case. But that usually works. Again, it doesn't always work. Sometimes uh, you have to kind of hold hold the uh, the. Uh, calipers one way or, or another for for it to uh to uh work so let's see let's do that so right now i'm squeezing the brake pads i'm not sure if you could you could tell or not but you can see the caliper moving a little bit All right so that's me squeezing the brake pads or excuse me not the brake pads the uh the uh brake lever so i squeeze the brake lever so now i'm gonna Go in here and uh, oops, and uh, jeez, this extension doesn't need to be there anymore. Oh, 
Right, so go back to squeezing the brake lever. And uh, oops, it. stupid sucker wrench. Let me get the let me get a regular sucker wrench. through bolt sucker wrench works cool for, for their for what they are but sometimes they do that they slip out of that that's when you need a regular sucker wrench all right squeeze the brake lever actually let me uh loosen this this one too let me loosen up and, and start over again okay so i'll loosen up squeeze the brake lever it's uh oops. It stops, okay, don't, don't tighten it up yet. Let's go until it stops, All right? Stops, then very lightly, very lightly tighten them. The reason why you don't want to just tighten them in one shot is because when you do that, there's a chance that it will actually cause the brick caliper to kind of twist a little bit and cause it to uh, be out of alignment and uh, and and you know and make the and the brake pads will rub on the rotor. Okay, I think I'm pretty much it. Yep. All right. So that's it. There you go. Uh, that's how you do it. So now there's a big ass kink here. Well, not quite that big, but damn, it's pretty. Oh, you know what? I need to pull the, the slack up. Put the slack up. So, yeah, see, I don't like this right here. See this bend right here? That's a pretty tight bend. I don't like that. And that I think has to do with the, this bracket right here. So, so this this first bracket here kind of drops the the uh, caliper downwards. I'm gonna see if I can find another bracket where I could actually where instead of the bolts is down here, the bolts are up this way. So that way you could bring the caliper up up this way. So yeah, I think I am gonna order another one. But for now, you know this you know I'm gonna use this temporarily. Um, yeah. If, if I could find one bracket instead of using two, I don't like this. I don't like this double bracket with, with two bolts. That's like extra complication, extra shit to go wrong. I'd rather just go one bolt. Um, actually, no matter what, I think you still have to go two bolts. But I'd rather have um, one bracket versus two brackets. Right? So that's just extra, extra complicated, having two brackets. Uh, yeah. So I want to yeah, wanna find a different bracket where it's, it... It actually brings the caliper up, down in, up, like sitting right here, so that way this angle is not so sharp. And I think it's also it protects the rotor better, or not the rotor, the caliper better, because right here, the caliper is below the axle right here. So let's say you have a rock over right here that comes by and it could hit the caliper, right? Versus being up right here, uh, the the fork will protect the caliper a little bit better, if that makes any sense. But anyways, for for today, uh, for tonight, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Uh, and just ride around the yard in the dark and see how it feels. All right, thanks for watching. All right, so I just uh, bedded in the, the pads, just going up and down the driveway. It's not fully bedded in, but it's, it's uh, pretty close. And you actually see the right, you can see the wear, the wear on the rotor now. Actually, let's look at it. Uh, let's look at uh, how much. How much wear you guys should see so let's see so you see it at the, oh, it's the lights kind of reflecting too much right there so you see on the top right here it's not this the pad's not touching it at all but it is but the pad the the pad is um you know it does uh, overlap this uh this empty space right up here where my thumb is and on the bottom you can obviously see right there that the pads definitely is overlapping the empty space down there. So so yeah, so it fits pretty well. And now as far as right now it feels that before when you had a smaller rotor with this big 21 inch wheel, before when I was braking, I could actually feel the uh, the front took a lot more effort, you know, on the at the lever. 
just took more effort and it just it didn't feel as strong as the rear. The rear feels plenty strong, uh, but the front not so much. Now, the front is more. It feels more similar to the rear, so so the to the amount of effort and and feel, it's almost the same. It's not quite. I think uh, right now it still feels a little bit. The front still feels a little bit weaker, but I think because no, it's not fully bedded in yet. Once it's, it beds in more, it should feel very similar to the to the rear as far as you know how much effort I need to put into the lever versus how much you know how much it clamps down on the rotor and 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 uh, and uh, you know uh, slows the the wheel from slows the wheel down. Uh, the the rear right now the way it is, you know, you get, I can easily lock up the back back wheel no problem at all. The front, uh, I'm squeezing as hard as I can, and it's still you know it's still spinning a little bit because I, I, I you know you could tell when the the road is not fully bedded in yet uh, uh, how it still kind of slipped a little bit so I can still feel that but again I think once once it uh, once it uh, fully beds in it should uh, feel much. You know, much grippier, stronger has a has a stronger bite basically. So right now, the way it is right now, because it's not fully bedded in, that that bite isn't as powerful. Um. So again, I think it's the uh, it's a uh, uh, just a matter of you know getting it bedded in, and it should be good. Um. Oh shit, it's hot. Holy cow, it's still hot. Wow, it's hot. I'm touching the, the caliper, the, the other side of the caliper. I can feel the heat in the caliper, man. Holy cow, that's hot. Oof. I wonder if I should put in the, the different brake pads. I have the Shimano brake pads. So it's, uh, so it has, because it has cooling fins, so it, it cools down a little bit more. I think I, I'm going to do that. And save these brake pads for the rear. I'm not, I don't even know what kind of compound this is either. But anyways, so that's that's the progress.